Uh, with that, we go on to the next talk on IOL placement in ice well poster capsule rupture. Can we have the slides on, please? So in terms of what are the options we have for IOL placement, once you have a poster capsule rupture with an intact rexus and a small PC tear, one can think of placing the IOL in the bag also, it, especially if it's a punched out rexus or rexus in the center. But if it's a large rent or if you have a, a rexus tear and don't have adequate capsular support but a small PC tear, then one can think of sulcus placement. Uh, in case you don't have adequate anterior or posterior capsule support and the whole bag uh, is extruded, then you'll think of the iris fixation or steel fixation technique. Capsular bag fixation, always a single piece I will, much easier than placing a three piece in the bag. And sulcus placement, we never place a single piece, we only place a three piece in the sulcus. Before the IOL is placed, uh, we have to clear the vitreous. All the lens matter has to be removed. Uh, that I think we have to remember that we should not be in a hurry to think of the lens only. That will come only based on how much of residual capsule support you have after you have removed all the lens matter and cleared the vitreous. Make sure you have good visibility. That's when you will be able to choose the right kind of lens. If you have already planned a specific lens like a multifocal or a toric, whether that can be placed or not, only after you put iris hooks and able to see uh, uh, where the support is. And assess the anterior capsule rim, poster capsule rim, rim, and then decide if you want to go for an alternate technique as well. So these iris hooks are invaluable. I think in more than a regular FACO, when you have a piece in almost always the pupil comes down. So use the iris hooks once the vitreous is removed. This way you lift the iris. So you have enough space in the sulcus to place the IOL comfortably. And the anterior capsule rim is also visible well. The sulc is always a three-piece, and if you have noticed, the leading haptic of a three-piece lens has to be, uh, when loaded, has to be in a convex style. That way, it will go comfortably into the sulcus, and that is the easiest way for you to place it. And the trailing haptic is then placed, so these hooks are very useful. Otherwise, you may go and place the lens in the bag. You may think you're placing it in the sulcus, but this may go into the bag, in which case, the IOL will decenter and even dislocate. Even if your uh, pupil is not very small, like in patients who have a slightly larger pupil, if you're using a plunger for an injector, one can do this uh, one-handed implantation. The other hand, use a Kuglin's hook and retract the iris. Again, you'll have to see where the haptic goes. We cannot blindly place the IOL like we would do if the PC was intact. So while implanting the leading or the trailing haptic, retract the uh, iris with your Kuglin's hook or a Y hook and then you place your IOL in the sulcus and optic capture. Three piece IOLs, uh, I mean if you're placing it in the sulcus and you have the adequate size text, if it's very large of course you can't capture but most FACO rexes you can capture the optic in the rexus margin. In patients who have, like I said, this is just to show that a piole was placed by mistake in the bag. If you don't take care, this is what can happen. It can decenter, it can dislocate. Now this is a three-piece lens, so it's not being exchanged. Uh, otherwise, if you're placing, if you're going to place it in the sulcus and if it's a single piece, I would even plan to go and do an IOL exchange. Now PMMA haptic, though it's a single piece, the same lens is used in sulcus, retract uh, like I showed in the earlier uh, case. Uh, with your Kuglin's hook and then dial your haptic into the sulcus and that's how these IOLs will center well. This is a patient who had a posterior polar with a pre-existing uh, poster capsule rupture. So there's a high chance here and there was a PCR earlier pre-op also noticed through an OCT. Lot of care is being done to, to kind of not enlarge the PC range. So before the IA probe is retracted, you want to inject uh, a dispersive viscoelastic. I would do this either if there was vitreous loss or no vitreous loss. This will help to contain the vitreous loss and prevent the PCR from extending larger. So you can see a central uh, split in the PC because of the posterior capsular end. I will in the bag, single piece, ensure the leading haptic and optic junction. It, it is flexed so that that can actually go in the, into the bag without having to dial it. So it's not a good idea to dial these lenses into the bag, but you can just flex the haptic. That's, was, that's why the single piece lenses are preferable when you're trying to place an IOL in the bag. Uh, you don't have to go and remove the viscoelastic behind the uh, IOL in most instances. Now just I'm cleaning up the uh, 
lens matter which is uh, fibrosed at the edge of the PC tear here. But these lenses, you can either do a three piece in sulcus or a single piece in the back. Uh, especially if there's no vitreous loss, this can be an option. Now, this is a patient with a PC rent. So once a rent is identified, the rest of the nucleus, just to show a step to step by step uh, approach of this uh, patient. So the goal here is to ensure the rent does not become larger. You do the FACO away from the area of the rent, try to stay away. Slow motion FACO, ensure good uh, chamber stability, you have good uh, fluidics and then emulsify the uh, cataract. So you will have to have the fragments away from the uh, rent uh, area and then uh, I am using the FACO probe but I think it is preferable to go and use the IA probe in these cases to get the epinucleus out. That is a safer, safer uh, option. Once the nucleus and uh, the cortex is removed, then you can go ahead and uh, do the anterior vitrectomy. So the epinucleus is removed for uh, irrigation aspiration, like Dr. Shurakumar said, you can either go in with the Simco. Uh, if you are using the automated INA, you can go with the bimanual also. This way you can have the irrigation away from the area of the uh, aspiration, so you can keep it away from the rent area, whereas the aspiration probe may have to go to the area of the rent. Now the vitrectomy is done after that, so the cutter is facing the vitreous. This way the vitreous will cut and go back home. So you, know, you will have to remember that you will not have to have it so close that it cuts the PC, but trying to face it will help. I normally do wound uh, assisted implantation, but I would never do it if I want to do take an uh, uh, IOL in the bag for a PC rent uh, a patient, So because I want the haptic to go into the right place. So extend the incision. And like I said earlier, just flex the haptics uh, and uh, place it away from the area of rent. And the cortex is removed again very uh, gently. You want to have a stable chamber, but don't overhydrate when removing the viscoelastic, I'm sorry. Uh, that is important. So like I said, the goal is to ensure that the rent which we had initially is not enlarged. Finally, I would like to use a pilocarbon as well, just to prevent any kind of vitreous prolapse in the post-op period and to check for any vitreous on the table as well. This is another case where I chose to do a capsular bag fixation, but this is a large rent. Again, before placing it, a vitrectomy is important. Uh, here, there is a large rent in the center, so you can have the cutter facing down, and you can see the capsule rim of the rent is straightened, which means the vitreous is uh, pushed back. And once that is done, I would like to use the hooks. One, because I want to also enlarge the anti-capsule vessel, because it's a little larger PC rent, so there should be enough space to insinuate the IOL in the bag between the anterior and posterior capsule. So enlarge the rent, sorry, enlarge the rectus slightly. Uh, as mentioned earlier, enlarge the wound, take the IOL inside the bag. Leading haptic has to be stabilized on the rim of the capsule which is there. Uh, and look, at, I mean, it, one does not have to use a single piece. So, but if you apply placing a single piece, this will be the step-by-step -step approach. So make sure your rectus is large enough your vitreous is taken care of, you have good visibility, use the iris hooks, flex the haptics and place it. If you are placing it in the sulcus, uh, ensure that your loading is done well uh, and again make it maybe 3.2. Some of these cartridges you need for a three-piece lens are slightly larger than what you would use for a single-piece lens. So uh, Dr. Vivekananda will be showing the iris fixation technique. I will just show one deviation, one variation of this uh, technique of how one can do consider doing iris fixation with a three-piece uh, IOL. So this is a bag, capsular bag and IOL which is completely contracted in a patient who had retinitis uh, pigmentosa. So the, uh, through a, a 3 millimeter incision, the IOL is cut and then a new 3-piece acrylic IOL is first placed in the anterior chamber. So this is a sensor IOL. I like a sensor in these cases because the anterior surface is rounded. So I will only tile the leaning haptic behind the iris have the optic in the anterior chamber, support it from below using a cyclodialysis patcher and tuck the trailing haptic below the iris. This way you have an optic capture. So this spatula on the left hand becomes very critical to hold it. And after this fixation becomes easy. So you will probably see more ways of how you can tie it. So because of this uh, capture, the haptic becomes more evident. It, you can see it well. Take a bite below it and then suture both the ends on both sides of the haptic. So in conclusion, early recognition of a PC tear is uh, important and choosing the right IOL design and placement can also ensure a good outcome in these patients. 
Thank you.